Nothing's worked out for me. The whole life has been one disaster after <laughs> another. It's... I just want to begin all over again, you know. Really? No. <laughs> I've had a ball. <laughs> I always find it um, very inhibiting to go back and keep referring to older work uh, because you kind of instinctively start dragging up the luggage of the older work and, and it starts appearing in the new work. And I don't, I really don't have any interest in doing that. I really have always felt, well, I, I've done that, uh, let's go somewhere else now. And it is selfish in a way because I know that an audience often expects to hear the things in the past to sort of, uh, whether it's to qualify their kind of loyalty to you or whatever, that, that those things really do exist and they want to hear them. Um, and I'm not terribly tempted to get involved in that, which is uh, maybe unfair, but it's just the way I am. Although recently I, I'm very much going back on my word. They're well known because I've played them a lot and I've really, oh, I've played these things so many times, please. A whole show of them. This is unreal. What have I got myself into? Um, but I suppose, having said never again, it's now time for me to say, well, all right, maybe a bit. So I'm at the all right, maybe a bit stage of my life. And uh, I'm starting to play a few of the old ones again, which has been, it has been fun, actually. Um, we've actually played changes on the, uh, shows over in Europe, which has been like, yeah, it was great. It's a really good song. But my memories of doing those are like utter boredom, you know, but having not done them for 10 years, and it's, it's fast approaching 10 years, it's, you, they suddenly, they, they have a new interest for me. You've got like a new these, band playing them and you've got, you know. Yeah, it's not just the band though, it's the fact that I've stayed away from them and just haven't referred to them for so long. And it's actually not a bad thing to do because I don't feel like I'm just walking through the songs, which is the most horrendous feeling in the world as an artist, is to say, I'm thinking about dinner, I'm thinking about I wish I was in Paris at this minute, or I wish I was anything but in this song. And to be performing like that, and the audience feel it. They can, they can feel when you're just like, oh, here we go. You know, and I, I never wished to be an artist that work like that, and so I refuse to do them. I've set up the most peculiar set of circumstances, and as much, I, can, I know this just from the, the, from the, you know, the website, is that the, all the various ages, the various band groups, all came into my work at different periods and have their own completely different idea of what it is that I do. And I really can't please all the people all the time. <laughs> it's virtually impossible. You're constantly little pockets of people. I in know. Parts yeah, of you've got some people who love, you know, they've got the low heroes lodger people. And then you've got the let's dance people. And of course, the much older ones who are hunky dory, ziggy, and all that. And then there's the, uh, the earthling outside uh, uh, bunch. And they're usually much, much younger. Yeah. And, and th that's kind of interesting because they're now going back to. They've read about through Trent or uh, Billy Corgan or whatever, things like Hunky Dory and uh, Scary Monsters. Uh, so they've been going out and getting those albums. And, uh, and so it really is so diversified. I just, I never know what to play now anymore. Cause, so I can't, I can't refer to them. I have to then, again, look back to what it is I want to do. And I keep coming back to that. And every time I do do that, it, it's the right thing to do. I never ever thought of myself as a futurist in, in any... Is that the trick? Don't think about it. No, it was, it was very much about what is exciting me right now. And, and because a lot of what always excited me um, and my enthusiasms were always things that I picked up from the edge of culture rather than stuff that was in the mainstream. Because those things weren't necessarily popular at the moment, when they did express themselves as mainstream, um, it was, I, I'd kind of been there already, you know? But I think most artists, actually, who are sort of really kind of have a, an antenna for, for creativity and, uh, and, and how, their, how their culture works tend to do that. I'm not alone in doing that. Um, and it always looks as though one is kind of avant the system. But it's not true at all. It's just actually in tune with things that aren't popular. I think anything that I've really done, whether it be uh, uh, writing songs or painting or whatever, I think it's it's more the process of putting it together, actually, really, than the end result. I mean, one is aware of an end result, uh, but I tend to drift off quite fast when 
when a project's finished and I want to kind of keep moving on, you know. And I enjoy that other people enjoy the end product, but that's kind of not really why I do it. Does that make any sense? I do enjoy the times that I do get involved in production. I love doing the uh, Iggy's albums that I did with them. But I don't have a, a burning desire to uh, actually go in the studio with anybody else at the moment. I really do have a lot that I want to accomplish as, as a, a writer and artist. I hate albums that are really happy. Uh, when I'm really happy, I don't like to hear happy albums. And when I'm really sad, I don't want to hear happy albums. So for me personally, there's not really much uh, place in my life for them. And I tend to gravitate toward the lonely and the isolated anyway, when I write. If I lost my passion for, for, for um, just, just actually daily life, you know, I, I, I don't know, whether there's, there's the, uh, the conundrum of how one is supposed to as they say, stay young. Well, I don't believe it's anything to do with actually young, because I know a lot of young people who have no enthusiasm for life whatsoever and, and deal with it very passively. I think it's a question of, of keeping uh, in touch with uh, uh, the society that you live in and, and not losing the uh, original enthusiasm for what makes you tick and what, what really sort of tweaks your interest in, in life. And so for, just for me, it's that I'm I don't know what happened, but I've always retained my enthusiasms for being around, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I, I think life's a cool idea. New single, Thursday's Child. Is it your finest achievement, the new album, for this year? Uh, for this year? <laughs> it's the best album I've put out all year. I can safely <laughs> say that. I don't, think, uh, I don't think I'll be able to compete with that myself this year. <laughs> The song was to uh, represent the idea of um, one man's disillusionment with his present situation, or rather the fact that he settled into a kind of resigned state uh, with a wife who is probably somebody he loves but is not in love with, and uh, a lifestyle which will do. Um, and he looks back to his earlier self and kind of just thinking, what if, what if I'd made things very different? What if I'd stayed with that girl as, um, instead of breaking up? <coughs> I explained that to Walter Stern, who's the director, and, and I must say, Walter, I've always admired Walter's work because he has these, he can take these very normal, mundane situations and just give them a shift and a kind of a disquieting movement to them that, that takes them out of the normal. Uh, and uh, he just got this in one and produced just with the bathroom situation, absolutely told that story so brilliantly. I think it, 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 will, it will, I think, uh, be one of the favorite videos that I've made. I think it's an exceptional piece of work. I started the album, really, um, as an exercise in traditional songwriting, because I usually sort of experiment in the studio. I have done for years. And uh, I really enjoyed doing this, writing songs. It's, uh, it's, it's a good thing. What, I mean... So I constructed everything before we went into the studio. Um, and because the words, the lyrics generally on the album are very simplistic, they're, they're simple things, I think, express quite strongly. The music that uh, we wrote for them is more of a supportive kind of music. It's not a, it doesn't create two or three different focuses. There's only one focus, and that's the song and the song lyric. So it's not as experimental as the, uh, say, the previous album, Earthling, or Outside, or whatever, because it's supposed to do a different job. When I started making videos, um, I used to pretty much storyboard them myself, and I got really involved in how they should look and what I thought my song should look like. I think the difference for me is that these days I'm more interested in seeing how the director that I'm working with actually visualizes them. So it's quite a quantum leap, really. And it took 30 years to get there. I look for somebody, really, to work with who doesn't try and hit the song on the head too hard, um, doesn't tell it in a very obvious way, but maybe leaves room for interpretation. Because the one, of course, has been articul articulated too many times, probably, but 
the one bad thing about videos is that they do tend to tell the story too much for the viewer. Um, the better videos for me are the ones that leave enough room for the viewer to also contribute in some way and add extra information. It's a very sophisticated site and it seemed to have uh, an understanding of how to get information over to the user and how easy it is to link up to charities and help concerns that would interest the user. I mean, it's a great home base for a site and uh, it can take you to any, virtually anywhere you want to go, any in interest you have. And it was seeing the, the power of that particular site, I think, that convinced me more than anything else. I saw it in its embryonic stages and I thought, well, it's not a wishy-washy site. It really is a powerful site. So this thing has some clout behind it. Are you tapping into these emotions when you're sitting at, at home with Because I'm a really good writer. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I hope that above all, above everything else that, that I do really, uh, I do, I, I, I have some store in the fact that I, I enjoy writing very well, very much, and I do it very well. Yeah. I'm not, uh, uh, really, I think, and nothing else would exist if, it, if, it, if the fact was that I'm a writer, and that, that seems to be what drives me through all the other areas that I get involved in, whether it's painting or sculpting or getting involved in the internet. The one thing that's always there for me that I like doing the most mm. is, is writing. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm incredibly selfish as a writer as well. I, I do write only for me, and then my small expectation is that I wouldn't be the only one who's thinking about it at all. You know, if this interests me, there's got to be somebody out there that it also interests. But that's the afterthought. Uh, once the work is completed, uh, I become very public about it and I try and sell it as well as possible. I do as much promotion as I feel is necessary. But up until that point, it really is quite an introverted interior kind of thing. That's it, you got that right? Oh, come on, that's a good bit. Just leave it at that. <laughs>